Separatist leader Namde Kanu has called for an end uh, to the sit at home order in the southeast. In a handwritten note addressed to the Finland based uh, Biafra agitator Simon Epa, Kanu told Epa to stop antagonizing southeast governors or politicians from the region. He said that anyone enforcing the sit at home order should be made to face the wrath of the law. The note was made public by his special counsel, Aloy Ejimako. This is a direct order from me. I hereby instruct you to desist from calling for any seat at home henceforth. Equally refrain from antagonizing governors or persons in political positions because you are not in a position to know what they are doing on my behalf. I'm ordering you to make a public announcement to the effect that you are in receipt of a direct order from me to cancel any pending seat at home in place at the moment. I embarked on this movement to liberate our people, not to enslave them. I despise and we despise any person or entity that wishes to inflict unnecessary hardship on our people. Anybody still engaging in sit at home is not my disciple. This is Mazin Nandekano speaking to you all through me. Let's now cross live to another and speak to Unam the Kano's lawyer, Aloy Ejimako. Thank you for joining us on news night. Now let's get something. Thank you. Uh, right, let's get something uh, really straight here. Uh, we need some clarity uh, for the purpose of the viewer. Okay, uh, those enforcing the sit at home order till now. Who are they loyal to? Who are they answerable to? Are they answerable to uh, Unam de Kanu or answerable to uh, Epa? Well, um, I'll speak uh, on what I know as of counsel. Uh, that might be limited knowledge. That might be all you need to know and our viewers tonight. Mazin Unam de Kanu is the supreme leader of the indigenous people of Biafra. There are no two supreme leaders, and at this moment, there is no deputy leader. They have other leaders lower down the hierarchy of supreme leader and deputy leader. So standing on that, anybody that acts in the name of IPOB, whether the person acted for good or bad or for the ugly, is often attributed uh, to the head of the organization. And the fish rose from the head. So Mme De Cano is very concerned about this. He never meant for things to go this awry, to go out of control. So your question is quite relevant. So we, he is trying to separate the apples from the oranges here. So that not when somebody goes out there and say, I'm a disciple of Mazin Namdekanu, and he levies violence on the general public in the name of sit at home, Namdekanu gets to take the bad name simply because he's the head of the organization. It's not fair on him. So having considered all this, he needed to provide the clarity you talked about to separate the apples from the oranges and the best way he thought he could do that is to end it once and for all. To start from the very beginning and end the process that is causing the issues. And that process or that event or act that is causing all these issues is at home. I met with him on 24th and he spoke to me along these lines that he's now left with no option that to take this drastic step. The question Thank is, you. yes, indeed. The, the, the question is how uh, drastic, really, is this letter to uh, Simon Ekpa? Uh, uh, is there any chance at all that uh, Namde Kano may have been put under some kind of pressure, you know, to write this letter, in a, you know, just to secure uh, his own freedom? And from all indication, it looks like Simon Ekpa is a genie out of the bottle. What are the guarantees that this letter will actually rein Simon Ekpa in and his followers? Well, 
Conan the Khan was renditioned over two years ago. So if you would have succumbed to any kind of a pressure from any quarters from the government or whatnot, this should have happened over two years ago. Why now? He's not the kind of a man that succumbs to pressure. If he does, perhaps he should have dropped the allegation by an, uh, the agitation by now, constrain the travails and the, and the predicament that he has undergone. So there was no pressure of any sort. I was sitting with him. Unless you are suggesting that I pressured him, which I didn't. The topic of our discussion when I met with him on 24th July wasn't this. So it sprang on me as a surprise. I went in there to brief him on legalities, on the status of certain cases that we have around Eastern Nigeria and in, and in the federal capital. So he sprung this at me. So he must have ruminated over it, thought about it before I came in into the room to meet with him. So that's number one. Number two is you asked about whether Simon Ekpa will comply. Well, if you read my press release, this announcement should have been made on Simon Ekpa's platforms, media platforms. That was the order. That if you don't make it on your platform, I have authorized Barisa Lodge, Michael, to do it as a public announcement. So the order is directed to Simon Ekpa for the limited purpose of announcing on his platform. But the announcement I have made is addressed to the whole world. Is addressed to the whole world in general and particularly to people of southeast and south south of Nigeria and followers of IPOB that are legion. So the question should have been whether these followers of IPOB will comply and obey the instruction or order or directions of their extreme leader. So we shall see that as the days unfold from tomorrow. <laughs> Okay, Thank we're you. coming I mean, there. We're if they don't, there. what yeah. uh, what happens then? I mean, if uh, Simon Akpa's followers uh, don't do the bidding of Namde Kano, uh, at least based on what he said in the letter, giving that directive, what happens then? Well, the question you put now, calling, referring to Simon Akpa's followers, suggests that Simon Ekba has different followers from Mazin Nandekano. No, that's a fallacy. Simon Ekba's followers are Nandekano's followers. So anybody following uh, Mazin Simon Ekba is following him because he believes that Ekba is following Mazin Nandekano. Ekba calls himself as a disciple of Mazin Nandekano and the memo containing the order in that very memo, Mazin Namdekano also used the word disciple. So there is no different followers of Mazin Simon Ekpa, different from those who are in Mazin Namdekano. So that leaves us uh, at where I was in, the, my, in my previous statement that this order is directed not to Simon Ekpa, he had a limited role. To publish it, he didn't do it. So the responsibility fell on me as of counsel to do so. But the order is beyond him and directed to the general public generally and, of course, specifically to members of IPOB that are in the millions. So their leader has spoken and uh, it's left for them to fo follow his orders directions and instructions without looking to left or right. That is what I think should happen. Thank oh. you. So, uh, in other words, uh, there is this alliance between uh, Simon Epa and Unam De Kano. Uh, what, if, what if after this letter, uh, Simon Epa now sees it as an opportunity, sees the situation as an opportunity to uh, exert himself and take over the leadership? I cannot go into his mind. Uh, the, 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 the question is making extreme uh, postulations, uh, which 
I don't think she was from the subject matter of the discussion. I think we are going beyond the brief. I can't go into his mind and try to analyze what he's thinking. It has never come into my reckoning. So I just don't know what to say to that question. Not, not I expect him to uh, act in good faith. Uh, you know, that we, oh, no, let, let, me, let me just say one of you things. Uh, of course, I expect him to act in good faith. He describes himself as a disciple of Mazin Namdekano, and that has endeared him to uh, many, or most of, or not, if not all, or most of the uh, followers of Mazin, Mazin Namdekano. There is no demarcation. When he says that he's a disciple of Mazin Namdekano, it is to be expected that he should also fall in line when Mazin Namdekano instructs him to do uh, one or two things, such as this one right now. Is he so I don't aware, expect him is, to act differently. Yes. Uh, that he felt... Isn't Namde Namdekano uh, Namde been briefed? Has he been briefed about the Senate's rejection of, you know, the motion to release uh, him uh, from detention? And is there a sense that Southeast governors are doing enough uh, to, you know, get him to be freed or at least be allowed to go on bail? Well, when I met him on 24 July, that Senate motion you mentioned was still pending. It was, I think, a day after, on 25th or 26th, that the motion I did not carry. The motion fell to pass muster. I'm sure uh, through channels of news communication in the detention facility, he must have been away, not from me, not officially from his lawyers, but once in a while, news, news does filter into the DSS detention facility. And uh, a man of his stature is a prisoner of conscience, of high standing in the facility. Maybe he's aware by now as we speak, but he has not been made officially aware through any of us, his lawyers. And whether the South East governors are doing enough, to seek his unconditional release. I think it was implicit in the order he issued, of which I published today, that there is a sense in him that the South East governors or political leaders are doing something. Because he did say in his own handwriting that people are not in position to know people who are imposing sit at home or insisting on it, are not in position to know what the South East leaders are doing for him. When you, it was read out, when I had my voice being played back, that, that segment was covered. I spoke about it. And if you are looking at the handwritten notes, you see a, a reference to South East leaders doing something for him. And that people who are not in position, who are not in the know, are antagonizing South East leaders, and he does not like it. So that indicates to me that he has some sort of confidence or a bit of a reckoning that South East leaders are on a march, even though so covertly, and some of it out in the open, to do something about releasing him. The example you gave of the Senate, senators from South East Sponsoring emotion, that is very gusty of them. That's brotherhood, that's love. That's something in the open. The other day, about 10 days ago, I think the governor of Enugu State, Barista Pitamba, did openly urge President Bola Tinibu to release Mazin Namdekano. And I think he was able to eke out a meeting, a brief meeting with the president. I'm not so sure, but I read something in the news about that. That is one. And the other one prior to that was uh, Governor Charles Soludo. He did also make a public appeal. And I also he sent a letter to the, to the former president. Mm. So, yes. Thank you. Good place. So we do have some evidence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some evidence in the public domain. All right. That's now. how he did it. Let, let's, let's see how uh, the people, uh, the followers of Unam de Kano, uh, Obey these, the instructions in this letter. Thank you, Aloy Jumako, for joining us on Evesnight.